Welcome back to Movie Recap. Today I'm gonna show you a 2018 American war film called, The Catcher Was a Spy. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. The movie begins with the two men named, Marty Nuzzi, and Morris Moberg, walking down the street in Zurich, Switzerland. Then, they suddenly stop as they see the car arriving in their direction. Meanwhile, Mo discusses with Marty Nuzzi in a fine dining restaurant. Marty Nuzzi asks if it's his first time working, so Mo answers the question and says he never killed a man if that's what Marty Nuzzi's talking about. So, Marty Nuzzi clarifies that killing isn't brutal, but Mo disagrees with him. Mo then says that the man making the killing and its target is hard to do. Afterward, Marty Nuzzi asks about his previous life before the war, to which Mo answers about him being a former baseball player. Suddenly, Marty Nuzzi asks if a famous baseball player, Joe, also kills anyone, but Mo says not that he knows of. After that, Marty Nuzzi tells Mo that Mo will be fine, then reminds him to do his job even before the Gestapo realizes it. So, Mo leaves him with a reply that he'll try and walks out. Later, Mo leaves Marty Nuzzi on the street to enter the building alone. Upon his arrival, Mo greets everyone inside when suddenly he finally meets Werner Heisenberg, the person who won the Nobel Prize in 1932 for pioneering quantum physics. Eventually, Mo recalls what happened eight years earlier. Upon playing the game, Mo plays as a catcher for the Boston Red Sox near the end of a long undistinguished pro career. Then weeks after playing the game, Mo's sitting on a couch while reading a newspaper as he waits for Joe Cronin to enter the room. Afterward, Mo drops the newspaper to talk with Joe, to which he hears him saying that sooner or later, Joe will be going to need his spot on the roster in the baseball game. Unfortunately, Joe will later get Mo's spot as he's been asking for two seasons to hang up the cleats and coach. And Mo hardly plays now due to his work. So, Mo decides and chooses to finish the season and then coach. By that, Mo can go to Detroit afterward. As Mo prepares his luggage, Joe eventually asks if he gets a call about Japan's Goodwill Baseball Exhibition Tour. So, Mo says he's packing to get himself ready for the upcoming flight. Joe is going with the murderers Roe, Ruth, Gehrig, Avril, Geringer, and Gomez. Then, before Mo leaves, Joe reminds him that they like Mo being Professor Berg, who speaks Japanese. Confused, Joe says he doesn't speak that language, and then walks out. After a while, Joe takes the cab on the way to the airport when suddenly the driver asks him if he's a known baseball player, Mo Berg. But Mo lies and says that he might look like him. Luckily, the driver stops bothering Mo, and asks where he'll drop him off instead. Mo then points out the drop-off location, but the driver suddenly pisses Mo by pronouncing his last name. Because of that, Mo eventually orders the driver to stop the car and leaves. Mo then walks a few more blocks away from his drop-off point. While walking, Joe suddenly notices from his peripheral vision that someone's following him, so he immediately hides in an alley and then attacks the man. After punching him, Mo realizes that it's Dalton. However, Mo swiftly punches Dalton again after refusing to answer his question about him living around the block. Whining, Dalton finally admits that he doesn't live there. So, Mo says that what Dalton's doing is intruding on the privacy of another ballplayer. But the frustrated Mo beats him up as he hears Dalton swearing words at him. Afterward, Mo goes home to his significant other, Estella Huni, who he catches playing the piano in their living room. Mo then gradually walks toward Estella and caresses her shoulders, telling her to continue playing. However, Mo suddenly kisses Estella's lips while listening. So, they end up coupling on the piano, then spend their night conversing afterward. Later, Joe attends a show where he serves as a special guest. After the prelude, the host introduces Mo as Professor Berg, who plays for the Boston Red Sox as a catcher, and is a top graduate of Princeton University. In addition, Mo holds advanced degrees from Columbia University and Sorbonne University in Paris, France. On the other hand, Estella listens to the radio, to which she hears Mo confidently answering questions from the show. Because of that, the audience gives Mo applause for batting a thousand after he gets the correct answer. However, Mo suddenly denies his relationship with Estella as he answers the host's question about whether he gets a Mrs. Berg in his life. After a while, Mo spends a romantic dinner with Estella, wherein he finally opens up about the exhibition he's going to attend in Japan after the baseball season. Estella then attempts to come with Joe, telling him that she always wanted to take some pictures in Japan. But Joe keeps making excuses not to let her go with him, frustrating Estella. Joe even says that Estella's not his wife. Because of that, Estella suddenly walks out, but Mo stops her. Luckily, Estella returns to the table, and asks Mo why he doesn't want her to go with him. So, Mo says that he prefers to go alone. 
After hearing that, Estella sarcastically says that it wasn't hard to answer it, then leaves Mo behind. Later, the exhibition tour of Japan finally begins, wherein Joe will play his last season baseball game. Upon the opening ceremony, two Japanese men call Mo. So, Mo approaches them and eventually talks in Japanese, to which he says that they must laugh as if he told a joke. That way, Mo will impress his friends by speaking Japanese. Luckily, the Japanese men follow his favor and familiarly tap Mo's shoulder while laughing. Afterward, Mo walks out when another Japanese man named, Isao Kawabata, suddenly talks to him. Kawabata then shakes hands with Mo, assuring him that he will surely enjoy in Japan. Later, the game eventually begins, wherein Mo plays as a catcher. On the other hand, Dalton is trying to ruin Mo's image among other ballplayers. Later at night, Mo spends time with Kawabata. While walking off street, Kawabata suddenly asks Mo if he can teach him to play baseball because he sees it as an exciting game. So, Mo gives brief information about baseball, wherein Mo explains that it is a game where players are most likely to fail more often than succeed. After agreeing, Kawabata answers Mo's question, and says that he's a professor of history. Because of that, Mo eventually gets interested in his job, in which he asks Kawabata why he doesn't know anything about baseball. So, Kawabata explains that choosing Japan to hold the game is essential because they need to learn about one another to preserve their culture. Joe and Kawabata, get themselves a drink in a restaurant afterward. As they toss, Mo eventually shares his experience in a baseball game. Technically, Mo often hides from everyone because he thinks he doesn't fit with anyone, resulting in no wife and a natural home. The following day, Mo wears his yukata and sneaks onto the roof of a Tokyo hospital to covertly film Tokyo's harbor and navy shipyards. Going back to 1941 is the present time, Mo and Estella hear the sudden news on the radio about the severe damage to American naval and military forces after the attack on the Hawaiian Islands. Because of that, thousands of American lives had lost. Moving forward to the event, Joe freely walks himself inside the room while the rest are busy conversing. As he walks, Mo suddenly sees Jerry, so he approaches Jerry to tell him his reason for working in Washington. Because of that, Jerry softly grabs Mo's arms to get them off the crowd, and reveals that he's working under the State Department. Luckily, Jerry tells him the process of getting his job by speaking the different languages, scared of people who might hear them about it. Fortunately, Mo can speak all the languages, causing Jerry to expose his boss, Bill Donovan. Bill is a football player who received a Medal of Honor in 1918. Jerry then says that they're setting up a minor adjunct to the State Department, so he gives Mo Bill's number to call him. Suddenly, a man calls for their attention to tell them they're at war. So, Joe and Jerry join them to listen to the choir singing the Battle Hymn of the Republic. The following day, Mo visits the Office of Strategic Services Headquarters to present the film to the chief, Bill Donovan. After watching the clip, Bill asks how Mo knew they'd be at war with Japan. So, Mo reveals that the Journal of Oriental Society is filled with articles about going to war with Japan. Impressed by Mo's enterprise and performance of discreetly filming in Japan as a private citizen, Bill asks him another personal question about his gender equality and skills of speaking seven languages fluently. So, Mo politely refuses to answer about being a part of LGBTQ and continues listening to Bill's comment about his portfolio. Eventually, Mo joins the war effort as a spy to beat Nazi Germany in the race to build the first atomic bomb, telling Bill that he's willing to die for his country. A while later, Mo ends up working at the desk, to which he pleads to his workmate to get him on the field. But his workmate says that he's useful at desk work, yet Mo aggressively disagrees. Because of that, his workmate walks out. Suddenly, Mo gets out of his room and hastily runs into the hallway, but Bill stops Mo after seeing him outside. Bill then puts Mo in the meeting room to meet Furman and Professor Sam Goldsmith. Afterward, Furman informs Mo that they've been doing a massive research and development program called, The Manhattan Project. Technically, the project aims to create a fission bomb that can wipe out an entire city. While listening, Mo discovers that the Germans are also working on such a bomb, to which Sam introduces Werner Heisenberg, who's in charge of the Nazis' attempts to create the atom bomb. Upon reading Werner's portfolio, Mo hears that he's joining Sam and Furman, to find the Italian physicist Werner and interrogate him. The three of them will go with the Fifth Army to prevent the Germans from killing or taking Werner. Later, Mo engages himself in training with the military and studies the use of weapons for the war. The following day, he bids goodbye to Estella, including breaking off their relationship as Estella refuses to accept his love the other night. After a while, Mo finally gets on the ship on the way to Italy. While reading in his cabin, Sam eventually enters. So, Mo opens up the topic about Sam's friend, Werner, if he's still considering him as a friend. 
But instead of answering, he gets unsure whether Werner's still alive or not because it's been years since they lost communication after the attack in Holland. Later, Furman, Mo, and Sam ride a boat in the middle of the night. After they successfully land in Italy, they meet the 5th Army as they fetch them using the military jeep. However, the driver, Furman, suddenly stops at a checkpoint. So, Furman asks the Italian soldier about the safest way to Piazza Leone, to which he hears from him that they will stay on the Via Appia, and stash their jeep when it gets too messy. But before Fruman drives again, he receives a warning that the Krauts occupy the whole area. With the help of the 5th Army, Furman, Mo, and Sam safely pass the battlefield despite the risk of getting sniped by the Krauts. After getting through it, Sam suddenly points out a Maldi on the upper floor of the building. So, Furman covers Mo to find a Maldi inside. Luckily, Mrs. Amaldi lets the three get inside and treats Sam's wound in the ear. While Furman is helping Mrs. Amaldi, Mo takes his time to interview Professor Amaldi about the German fission program. Technically, Mo discovers that Werner hasn't built the fission bomb yet as per Professor Amaldi because if Werner has done it already, the Germans will immediately bomb a city. After visiting Professor Amaldi, the three of them get back to the OSS headquarters to meet Bill. Afterward, they all assemble in the meeting room to talk about the alternatives for the bomb. So, Bill tells them that their British allies assure them that there is 100% no German bomb. Yet, they are still unsure what will happen once the bomb is finally made. So, Bill decides to kill Werner. Later, Mo visits a library to read more about Werner Heisenberg and his creations when suddenly Bill appears. Because of that, Mo stops reading and entertains Bill's question, to which he answers that he can kill Werner once they capture him. Joe spends days training on the gun range with the Italians. Then the following day, Furman, Mo, and Sam hold a meeting on how to get to Zurich. Suddenly, Sam says that Paul Scherer, a good friend of Werner and an anti-Nazi, can help them lure Werner into Zurich. But Sam clarifies that Paul will only lecture Werner and not lure him out. Technically, Sam disapproves of the killing, but he has left no choice, but to agree since it's an order from Bill. Then early in the morning, Furman and Sam escort Mo to his guides. Afterward, Mo follows them by hiking onto the mountain. Luckily, Mo gets free accommodation from Martinuzzi by driving him on the way to Switzerland. After a while, Mo finally meets Werner at the train station in Switzerland, wherein he watches him shaking hands with Paul. Afterward, he directly goes to Mr. Paul's office to help him talk with Werner. However, Werner accidentally hears Mo loading his gun in the restroom as he's supposed to take a bathroom break. Unfortunately, Werner sees Mo's face after watching him go out of the bathroom. In the lecture room, Werner takes a glance at Mo while lecturing. On the other hand, Mo begins his mission by listening carefully to Werner's discussion. Mo's comprehending all of Bill's orders on how to take down Werner. While listening, Mo fails to take out his gun, and kills Werner as he sees the Gestapo agents watching him from behind. Suddenly, Mo gets petrified of his mission to assassinate the brilliant physicist Werner Heisenberg. So, before continuing, Mo attends a mass in the church, and calls Estella to tell her that he loves her. Afterward, Marty Nuzzi escorts Mo to the restaurant where Mo has a dinner meeting with Werner. As soon as he enters, Mo immediately approaches Martinuzzi and plays chess with him. Unfortunately, Mo introduces himself with a different name. Because of that, Werner starts getting suspicious of Mo, and leaves him behind to have some dinner. Mo then follows a few seconds later. The movie ends with Mo discreetly guarding Werner nearby while he talks with the woman about him helping the Nazis to build the bomb. Because of that, Mo watches Werner walking out of the room as he endured enough of the interrogation. So, Mo takes it an opportunity to track Werner outside and prepares his gun. As Werner walks, Mo quickly follows to catch him, and asks if he can accompany him. Fortunately, Werner agrees and strolls down the street with Mo. However, a random man over the bridge almost kills Werner when suddenly Martinuzzi kills him first. Shocked, Mo and Werner look in Martinuzzi's direction after watching the man falls through the water. Then, in the end, Mo finds out that Werner's not a traitor because he never builds a German bomb in the first place. Technically, Mo never kills Werner and separates his ways with him. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this to help the channel out. Have a nice day.